在绵阳 ，I'm in Taxia Village in Fujian Province. It's a single clan Hakka village. A stream flows through the village, and Hakka tulos are built on both sides of the stream. In about six centuries, from one single family to clan members, not only in this village but also in Taiwan and overseas. The story of the Zhang clan in Taxia Village rhymes with the history of Hakka. I wasn't here for the first time, and if you watched my Hakka Tulo series, you've seen this region as well. To the south of the village are the Huang clan living in this class of Tulos. This is probably one of the most famous class of Tulo in the world. There are five of them. A square one in the center, surrounded by four round ones, and the Liu clan live in this huge tulo with skewed columns. <laughs> to the north of the village is a different Zhang clan live in the village with the chair tulos. During my first visit, I was actually a little bored. I just had a lunch and left. However, after I accidentally read the genealogy of the clan living in the village, I decided to come back. Not only did I find a secret hiking route, but I also found the history of Hakka people. Here we are. I'm back. Behind me is the ancestor temple, and it's not only the ancestor temple of residents in Taxia Village, but also two neighboring villages. The ancestor temple is built on the slope of a hill. It's said that it's where the first generation of the Zhang clan lived. On July the fourteenth, fourteen twenty-six, a woman moved here with her younger son. That's the beginning of the Zhang clan in Taxia Village. Each year on this day, clan members would hold ceremonial activities. The family tree in the genealogy illustrated the slow growth of the clan in the early days. The number of the men in the clan finally reached the double digit in the ninth generation. One and a half century has passed, and the Zhang clan was established in this village. Meanwhile, the first Tulo has been recorded in the genealogy. These four brothers built the Shuncheng Tulo. Generation collectively built the Shuncheng Tulo. Unfortunately, it was destroyed. This Tulo was rebuilt in the 1920s, and it retains its original name, Shuncheng. Both the construction and the rebuilding of the Tulo were recorded in the genealogy. The original Shuncheng Tulo was a square one. When the first floor was just built, one of the four brothers changed his mind. He felt a round tulo would be much better, but it was too late to change it. The tulo was destroyed in a riot in the 1920s. When a clan member decided to rebuild the tulo, he followed his ancestor's wall and built a round one. <laughs> The four brothers were not just satisfied with the big tulo; they believed they needed more space. Therefore, one of them moved to the area south of the Taxia Village and built the tulo there. This is the border of the Taxia Village and Daba Village. Taxia Village is right over there, at the right turn. A pavilion was built here in commemorate of a clan member who migrated to Singapore and contributed a lot to his ancestral home. <laughs> Thank you. 
The Daba village is mainly on the slope of the mountain. Except for the early tulos that are on relatively flat ground, most tulos in the village are in different shapes to accommodate the landscape. The Jixing Tulo behind me was the first Tulo built by the drunken in the Daba village after they moved here. This is the only round tulo in the village. The genealogy recorded that the brothers in the ninth generation hewed out terraced fields in the mountains between the two villages and built irrigation system up in the mountain. As a result, the arable land of the Zhang clan increased significantly. Soon, a second tulo was recorded in the genealogy that is the Yinan Tulo in the Taxia village. According to the genealogy, this member in the 11th generation who built Yinan Tulo was interested in antics and calligraphy. He was also well-traveled. He'd been to 13 provinces in China during his lifetime. It was such a middle-class lifestyle. Meanwhile, his brother further expanded the territory of the Zhang clan. He moved to the Nan'o village at the other side of this mountain and built a Tulo there. The Nan'o village is not a tourism place. There is no restaurant nor cafe in the village. This is the first Tulo built by the Zhang clan. It's a standard four-story square Tulo. Although it's the first Tulo built by the Zhang clan, it's not the most ancient one in the Nan'o village. The one across the street, which is supposed to date back seven centuries, is the most ancient one. Who built it seven centuries ago? This is the most ancient Tulo in the Nao village. Before the Zhang clan moved here, there were another four clans living in the village, and they have all moved out a long time ago. And this Tulo could belong to one of those four clans. From the 9th generation to the 11th generation, the Zhang clan not only set foothold in this hilly area, but also built their tulos in three villages, as well as on the accessible land on the slope of the hill. During this period, China also transitioned from the Ming Dynasty to Qing Dynasty. After the initial resistance of Han Chinese against the nomadic Manchu people, the Qing dynasty entered a relatively stable period with population boom. With population boom, the Qing imperial court encouraged people to migrate to less densely populated area. Taiwan was one of them. Many Hakka migrated to Taiwan during this period. In the genealogy of the Zhang clan, this member in the 13th generation born in 1699 migrated to Taiwan. He passed away in Danshui near Taipei. Today, Hakka is a major group in Taiwan, and most of their ancestors arrived in the 18th century. In the same time, the Qing Imperial Court also encouraged people to migrate to Sichuan Basin. The area experienced a massacre in the late Ming Dynasty, and the population shrank dramatically there. Some in the Zhang clan also migrated to Sichuan. Those who migrated away never came back. They started their own clan in their new home. Business opportunities also emerged during this peaceful period. Some in the village went to Zhangzhou city to engage in timber business. They opened up stores there and shipped timbers from the mountain's Hakka regions to the seaport to be sold to other parts of China. The business was lucrative, as evidenced by the tulos built in their home village. See that 
windows, two round windows on the top floor. They represent the eyes of a tiger, and the entrance represents the mouth of a tiger. It's a tiger to know. This is actually a complex of three tulos, with one on the side and one in the front. This one in the front has a very interesting shape. The tulos in the villages built during the 18th century to early 19th century were mainly by those merchants. The one on the slope behind was another example. It has a unique shape, similar to a chair tulo. In addition to building tulos, the merchants also established educational fund to reward the young men in the clan with good results in the imperial exam. Similar fund was actually first established a century ago. The genealogy recorded that a member in the 10th generation donated 1,500 kilos of grain each year to support children and young men in the clan to buy books and stationery as well as getting education. With constant investment in education, the most proud moment of the Zhang clan arrived. Generation after generation's efforts finally paid off. One clan member from the 15th generation entered the final round in PRA exam and was granted a governmental official position. This was his house. The shape of the entrance says it's a governmental official's house. This tulo was also built by a merchant in timber business. It was his son born in 1768 who made it to the final round in PRA exam. The pictures of three generations are hanging in the ancestral hall in the tulo. The one on the left is Zhang Jingba. At age 22, Zhang Jingba passed the municipality level in PRA exam. It took him another 20 years to pass the provincial level exam, and at age 59, he finally entered the final round exam held in the Imperial Palace, monitored by the Emperor. The plaque in the center of the ancestral temple is in commemorate of this glorious moment. Jing Shi was the title Zhang Jingba got. All who received this title would be granted a governmental official position. Due to his old age, Zhang Jinba was only granted a 7th grade level position, which was the lowest level. Nevertheless, he entered the top social class in China. He worked in that position for one year and retired. After retiring, he worked as a scholar in two different institutions in Zhangzhou and organized a literature association in his home village. Those other Hakka clans in the region had to look up to the Zhang clan during this period. In front of the ancestor temple, there are 24 stone poles. They were erected for clan members with great achievements. This is a Hakka tradition in west of Fujian province. The most ancient stone poles were erected for those who achieved good results in the imperial exam. Out of the 24 stone poles, 14 were erected for clan members who passed different levels of the imperial exam. The rest 10 were erected for elder people over 100 years old, as well as those clan members with great achievements abroad and gave back to their ancestral home. That leads to the next chapter of the Zhang clan, migrating to Southeast Asia. In the Nan'o village, there is a Tianhu Palace. 
The parents of those who set off for Southeast Asia would come to the temple to ask Mazu, the goddess of sea, to bless their children during the dangerous journey in the ocean. The Opium War in 1840 changed the Qing Dynasty and the Chinese society. The ensuing uprisings, chaos, and poverty forced many Hakka to leave their home for Southeast Asia to make a living. The Tulos in the villages built in this period were mainly by those who achieved the success abroad. The Shenyuan Tulo in the Daba village was one of them. A clan member born in 1831 went to Surabaya, Indonesia, and made a fortune there. With the money he sent back, his brothers built two tulos in the village. This round tulo in Taxia village is also related to this history. It was built with money sent back from Singapore. The tulo was severely damaged in the riots in the 1920s. In the 1970s, descents in Singapore sponsored to restore it. Since there is no need for so many rooms, only a portion was restored. This tulo in the Taxia village was built by a clan member who went to Thailand in the Qing Dynasty. He returned when he was old and built this tulo. Those two lows attracted more and more to migrate to Southeast Asia, despite the journey being risky and dangerous. In the genealogy, the destinations include Indonesia, Singapore, Thailand, Myanmar, and so on. According to my observation, the place that shows up most frequently is Surabaya, Indonesia. That pavilion on the border of Taxia Village and Daba Village is named after Zhang Rongting, who was born in the Shenyuan Tulo in Daba Village and went to Surabaya, Indonesia at age 21. After successfully starting a tea trading company in Singapore, he didn't forget those in his ancestral home that were still in poverty. He encouraged them to plant tea in the hills and invested a tea processing mill in the village. By exporting tea products to Singapore, those villagers got out of poverty. Today, there are still tea plantations in the mountain. In the next part, I'll take you to see the tea plantations up in the mountain and show you the most interesting part of my trip, hiking to the Nao village. The Nao village is at the other side of the mountain behind the ancestral temple. There is only one road from Taxia Village to Nao, and the distance is 10 kilometers. I just didn't believe that's the road the Zhang Clan took in the past six centuries. There must be routes up in the mountain, but there's little information on the internet. However, while I was hanging around near the ancestral temple, the path next to it caught my attention. It looked suspicious because I know each year clan members in three villages would hold ceremonial activities together in the ancestry temple. So, the next morning, the villagers here confirmed to me that this path goes all the way to Nao village. And let's go! I think I'm approaching the top and I'm still energetic. Let's go. It was too early to say so. I didn't even hit one third. These will be made into oolong tea, a tea product common in South Fujian province. Yes. 
According to my memory, this was only halfway to the summit. After one peak, there's another peak. After one bend, there's another bend. This is hiking, and this is life. Let's take a final look at the mountain we just climbed over. In the Sound Tourism Hakka Village, I learned some new information about Hakka Tulo. Do you find anything special about those Tulo? The wall on the top floor is dented. It's because the upper floors were constructed before the walls of the lower floors completely dried out and set. So here's the lesson to learn if you plan to build a Tulo yourself. In this abandoned Tulo, I found the answer I was looking for in Hakka Tulo episode 1. The Jichin Tulo used to be converted into separate units with partition walls, but the partition walls had been removed and I had to imagine what it was like. This Tulo is the answer. The corridors are divided into different units by partition walls. This reflects a real downside of living in a Tulo. Sometimes it's inconvenient. We all want private space. This is my trip in these three villages. Although it was only a two-day trip, I felt like having gone through six centuries. Before ending my video, I'd like to tell you the prequel of John Clan's story to give you a full picture of Hakka's history. In the 12th century, the nomadic Jurchen people invaded the capital city of the Song Dynasty, kidnapping the Song Emperor and the royal family. Northern China was occupied by the Jurchens. A few years earlier, maybe having foreseen this tragedy, a sir named Zhang Duan living in Baoji, Shanxi province, led his clan members to migrate south. They arrived at the town named Ninghua, near the border of Fujian province and Jiangxi province. A century later, his descendants moved to Shanghan County and then to Yongding County, both in Tingzhou. In the late Yuan Dynasty, one of the descendants named Zhang Tieya moved to Pinke County with the army to suppress a riot there. He stayed in Pinke County and had two sons. The younger son was the one who moved to Taixia village with his mother in 1426. This part of the story was recorded in the genealogy of the Zhang clan in Pinghe County. The full story of the Zhang clan is pretty much the history of Hakka people. It demonstrates who they are, why they migrated, and the routes of their migration.
It also explained the resilience of Chinese civilization. Despite being invaded by nomadic people many times in history, our language, the Chinese characters, our tradition, our values, and our look remain pretty much the same. That's why China is a civilization state. I'm Yan Yan. I make videos about sets of interest in China and histories and stories behind them. Subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.